Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be talking really specifically about Paper 1 for IB Physics. First, we're gonna be going over all the information and things you need to know about Paper 1, and then we're gonna be talking about my personal strategies and techniques for how I studied for and tried to improve my skills at Paper 1. Like, this is one of those exams which is definitely, like, hackable, and lots of the questions come up year after year, like, pretty much the same, just, like, they switch around things a bit. And so doing well on this test is not really a matter of, like, how knowledgeable of physics you are, your grade is really going to be more reflectant upon how well you have prepared for IB Physics Paper 1 in comparison to like how much actual physics knowledge you have. Okay, so let's start off with some general information about Paper 1. So the tests are different depending on whether you're HL or SL, but essentially this is the multiple choice exam. It's all going to be based off core content, so it's not going to have anything to do with the option, but it's going to be based off all of the knowledge that you learned throughout the year, which is considered core. So if you're SL, this is going to be a 45 minute exam, there's going to be 30 questions, you're not allowed to calculator, you get the data booklet, and you don't get any marks deducted, and this goes for HL2, you don't get any marks deducted if you get the wrong answer. So just, if you don't know, you just guess. Another thing to know about like how this exam is structured, which I didn't know until I, I walked into the exam, is that basically, is that you need a pencil, because you're basically going to be given this like sheet, and you're going to have to fill in the bubbles with a pencil. Just like those in that plan ICAST test, you have to like fill in the bubbles, with your pencil. And yeah, make sure you bring a pencil and an eraser. And for each question, it's worth one mark. So 30 questions, each one is worth one mark. In total, it's out of 30. All questions, no matter from what topic they are from, they're all weighted the same. Okay, moving on to HL. HL is slightly harder, slightly more difficult. The HL exam, which is the one I took, has 40 questions, 40 marks. Each question is worth one mark. That is like in comparison to paper two, which is worth like two or three marks per question. Again, there's no calculator and you get the data booklet. So the key differences between HL and SL is just that like, HL you have more questions, but you get more time. SL you have less questions and you get less time. 30 questions, 45 minutes versus 40 minutes and one hour. Also something that you should know, which I didn't know until like, a few weeks before my exam is that paper one comes right before paper two so you're gonna do the paper one then you're gonna get like a 20 30 minute break and then straight after that you're gonna be doing paper two at least that's how my school ran it at the time it might be different for you but yeah traditionally you do paper one you wait a bit you straight away do paper two. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. So because of the coronavirus, they decided to scrap paper three. And so paper one is probably worth a bit more now, I think, or paper two is just worth more. I'm not sure exactly, but traditionally paper one is supposed to be only worth 20%. So because of coronavirus, this may be worth more now because you don't have to do paper three. For reference, paper two is worth 40%. So that's worth a lot more than paper one. And paper three is also worth 20%. And then your IA is worth 20%. It's not the largest chunk of your physics mark, but it is significant enough to like change your grade. You don't have to get a 7 in paper 1 if you want to get a 7 overall because for example if you do really bad on paper 1 but then you do like really really good in paper 2, 3 in your IA then that will make up for your paper 1 mark. So for example in chemistry I think I got a 7 overall but I got 6 in paper 1 and paper 3. It balanced out so that my final grade came out to be a 7. In terms of grades for paper 1 I'm going to briefly go over it because I think it's interesting and it's good to know. So physics honestly has one of the lowest grade boundaries out of all of the science courses. Like I know chemistry you need like 36 or something to get a 7 out of 40. But then for physics, if you want to get a 7, you need 26 out of 40. And a thing to note is the grade boundaries are going to change year to year. So some years it may be 29, and some years it may be 25. It depends on how difficult the exam was and how well everyone else did. So just take this as like a rough estimate for what the grade boundaries are, but they do change and you're not going to know how they change until after you sit your exams because the IB isn't going to publish the grade boundaries until they've marked everything. So I'll just give the example from my year, which I found just by googling IB grade boundaries 2019. So if you get between 0 and 10 points that's a 1 don't shoot for that. Now the funny thing about it is that because like there's only 40 marks, the grade boundaries are like tight knit together. So between 11 and 12, you get a 2. Between 13 and 15 is a 3. Between 16 and 18 is a 4. A 5 is 19 to 22. A 6 is 23 to 25. And then a 7 is 26 and above. So if you're doing SL, a 3 is a passing grade. If you're doing physics as HL, you can't get a 3 because otherwise you fail the whole diploma. You need to get a 4 in all of your HLs in order to pass. So yeah, I pretty much just scraped a 7 for my paper 1. I got 26 out of 40. I got 14 points wrong apparently, but I still got a 7 because 26 is 7, so that's good. So yeah, if you're panicking about paper 1, just know you only need 26 marks to get a 7. 23 marks is a 6. Literally, you only need to get half the marks right to get a 5. If you get 20 points, which is like 50% correct, that's a 5. Okay, so that's for HL. Let's look at the SL. Okay, for the SL, 0 to 7 points is a 1. 2 to 9 points is a 2. 10 to 12 points is a 3. 13 to 14 points is a 4, that's your 
passing grade. <laughs> 15 to 17 points is a 5, 18 to 19 points is a 6, and 20 to 30 points is a 7. So in this case, again, if you get half of them right, 15 marks, that'll get you a 5. And you only need to get two-thirds of the questions right to get a 7. What's gonna happen is those are gonna add to your overall grade. It's gonna mix with the other papers and your practical work in order to give you a final grade. And then they compare that final grade to the grade boundaries to figure out whether you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. So yeah, basically in physics, if your overall grade is above a 67, then that's a 7. But I won't go into too much detail in this video. But if you want, it's right here. Those are the final grade marks that you need to get to get what you want. I think I got like an 81, so I got a 7 overall. But yeah. If you get a 7 in everything, you're pretty much guaranteed a 7. If you get like two 7s and two 6s, but then the 6s are high, it's pretty likely you'll get a 7 overall. Or if you get like a 5, two 6s, and a high 7, that can still even out to get you a 7. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to talk about more about the test in general and what I think about it. And obviously, this is just my opinion. Talk to your teacher, do what works for you, blah blah blah. This is just what I did to get 26 marks. Okay, so first of all, some things to know about paper one is that paper one is actually a really good like studying tool to prepare yourself for studying paper two, which is worth the bulk of your marks. Usually kids are like a bit too scared to do paper two because it's so daunting and like the questions are like ridiculously confusing and weird. But I always tell kids to like start off with paper one because it's just multiple choice. It's not as difficult. It's not as like mind blowing, etc. So yeah, if you're just starting out studying for exams, I'd recommend just like going through paper ones first to get you warmed up. Usually what I'll do is that I'll do like a paper one as like a warm up just to like, you know, quickly test my knowledge and then I'll move on into like doing paper twos for the day. If I'm studying for IB physics that day, usually I'll do just like paper one for a warm up and then I'll get into like the more meatier paper two stuff. Another thing to note is that they are in order of like the topics that come up. So first there'll be mechanics questions, then there'll be gravity questions, then there'll be oscillation and motion questions and then and etc. And so if you got like a topic test coming up, then you can kind of just like pick up paper ones, go to like the appropriate section and they're all going to be there for you. So if you're looking for like mechanics questions, you just go to the start of paper one and like the start should be all like measurements, uncertainties, and mechanics-y questions. Or if you got an atomic physics paper coming up, then you can just flip to the end and they should all like kind of be there. Okay, so moving on. Say you finish studying everything and you're getting started on doing full pass papers. You're kind of scared of paper two, so you're gonna do paper one. Even though you're only supposed to be given an hour to do this paper, I would just recommend like when you're first going through paper one, spend as long as you can on them. Do it once. The first time I did one, it took me like three hours to get through. Then see what you go wrong and spend a lot of time trying to figure out why you got it wrong, how you can fix it up next time. Just spend a lot of time at the start. It will seem tedious and tiring, but it's really gonna help you in the long run because eventually you're gonna realize once you figure out like exactly why you're wrong, you're gonna notice the pattern and you're gonna notice the question in subsequent paper ones. And yeah, it's just gonna be helpful if you take time at the start, either than just like skip over it or whatever. Another thing I would recommend is that don't start with the newest ones because you're gonna wanna save the newest ones for when you're actually practicing to do it like a real exam. I would start with more of the later ones and then just work your way up from like the old years to like the newest years so this is just when we are like studying them when you're actually gonna like sit down and do it in one hour you're gonna want to have like the newest updated versions for that so like save 2018 2019 because those are gonna be the most similar to your exam and you're gonna want to save those to practice with so yeah I would recommend for the first three or four papers you really spend like as much time as you need on them. I essentially built up a system, so I did these all on my iPad. And then I had like a notebook folder where I would paste all of the questions which I got wrong. And I would like spend a lot of time trying to figure out why I got them wrong. I would talk to my teacher about it. I would talk to my tutor about it. I just really tried to interrogate why did I get this wrong? And how can I not get it wrong next time? Because the questions keep repeating. For every question I got wrong that I figured out why I got it wrong, I would write like a really detailed answer to explain like exactly why I got it wrong and how you can do it correctly. Just really try and like attack your weakness <laughs> Additionally, for like more like memorizing questions, I would like screenshot those and put those into a notebook because there's not much to like explain if it's just like a fact that you need to know. So I would put those in a notebook for like for like active recall questions. I would have the question on one side and then the answer on the other. And I would just flick through these occasionally just to try and get like the more memorizable facts in my head. I would also have a notebook called things to remember. This is where I was essentially writing down all the things that I got wrong and like really important things that I needed to remember, which I just kept messing up on. Okay, so after you've been studying paper one for a while you've gotten to the point where you kind of can do some of the questions you can like answer a lot of them for the most part but the thing is with paper one is that what's hard is not the questions if you had all the time in the world i think most people could get like really high marks on it difficulty with paper one is timing because you only get an hour 
it's ridiculously short. Whenever I'm doing paper ones, I'm always panicking because I can like barely ever finish in time. I didn't finish in time. I guessed like six questions. It's okay if you don't finish because you have like 14 marks that you can mess up on and still get a seven. But yeah, just understand that the difficulty of paper one is that you have to be fast. And so after you've done like your three or four or five exams where you're just like trying to study the paper, then you have to move on to actually trying to do those exams in one hour. You have to time yourself and try to do it in an hour because you've got to learn how to like time yourself and pace yourself so that you can like at least try to complete the exam in an hour. Most people don't finish it by my watch. Like most people in my group didn't finish it. That's okay because you can still get a seven. But yeah, after you're able to like understand the questions really thoroughly, then you need to practice doing like the quick math tricks to like get the answer quick as quickly as possible. So yeah, the main takeaway is that as soon as you get like comfortable doing paper ones, then as soon as possible, you need to start doing them in timed conditions because it is a whole new experience when you try to do it in under one hour, which is a ridiculously short amount of time. <laughs> it seems long one hour while I'm like doing it for an hour, but it's not. Time flies by super quick and I would literally be like so anxious when I was doing my paper ones at the start because I did not know I was gonna finish in one hour. But after you practice, eventually you get faster. So it's nothing to worry about, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Maybe we can talk a little bit about what is on the test. So the kind of questions that come up, there's lots of ratio questions and like algebra -y questions where you have to rearrange formulas and stuff like that. If you suck at math, this may be a challenge at start but you get better over time so just keep at it there's gonna be some like basic knowledge questions there's gonna be some like weird like newton's third law intuition questions which are gonna be like what is this boat gonna do in those situations you have to like think intuitively about like what will newton say about this there's not gonna be any ridiculously confusing math stuff you're not gonna have to do any long division you're not gonna have to do any like super complicated mental math so don't worry about that there's probably gonna be a circuit diagram question somewhere. There's usually something about like the Feynman diagram. You might have to use your hands and do that thing to try and figure out which way the current's going. But yeah, you'll figure that out when you are studying. <laughs> yeah, in general, the best way to get better at paper ones is to just keep doing paper ones and to keep attacking the questions that you get wrong. Don't be upset when you get questions wrong. Be happy that you caught it before you actually went into the exam. So if you do your first test in school or something and you get like five questions right, be grateful that that exam didn't count and that you didn't mess up as badly in the real exam. I had a physics paper one journal on my iPad where I was like marking down my progress for how much of the exams I had done. Here is the bar where I would fill in how much I've done for those exams. Over here, I would write the questions which I got wrong so I can return to them later if I want to. And then over here is like the year. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely try to respond. And yeah, good luck with your physics studying. See ya.